Hi there, this is Richard Walker from Lucidate, and in this video, we'll be looking at how we can use AI to streamline sales and client service at an asset management firm. We'll see how we can use a federated system of multiple large language models to build dynamic, bespoke presentations for sales and client services professionals, all from the raw data of a pension scheme's assets and liabilities. We'll first spend some time looking at the intricacies of how pension schemes work and how asset managers use derivatives to hedge some of the idiosyncratic risks. While this discussion on pensions and financial derivatives will get quite technical, it is important for two reasons. Firstly, to explain why our AI app does what it does, but secondly, to show the importance of fine tuning a large language model. When we fine tune a model, we take advantage not only of the impressive qualities of the out of the box LLM, but we can turn LLMs into experts in specific areas. In this case, the use of derivatives by asset managers. So we'll take a very close look how we can customize and fine tune a large language model so that it does become an expert in financial derivatives and how we can reduce burdensome, laborious admin for salespeople. We'll see how AI can accomplish in seconds what it would ordinarily take salespeople hours, days, maybe weeks to accomplish. We'll start with a raw spreadsheet that contains pension fund assets and liabilities, pension fund demographics, as well as interest rate and inflation data. We'll drop this into our AI application, create some written commentary from the LVI manager to the client based on the idiosyncrasies of the portfolio and the current market outlook. This data will then be fed to a model that's been prompted to build PowerPoint slides and assemble them into a client-ready deck based on this data, all in a matter of seconds. We'll see the application again shortly, but first let's set the scene on pension schemes, specifically their assets and liabilities and their use of derivatives like swaps. The liability profile of a pension fund typically shows a classic hump shape due to the pattern of expected future payouts that the scheme must make. The scheme reflects the demographics of the pension fund's membership and the timing of their retirements and expected lifespans. The hump typically represents the period when the largest number of plan participants are expected to retire and begin receiving their benefits. After the peak retirement age, the liability profile begins to decrease as the retired population starts to age and pass away, reducing the number of beneficiaries receiving payments. The present value of future liabilities is calculated by discounting future cash flows back to their value today. This is done using a discount rate based on the yields of long dated bonds. There's an inverse relationship between interest rates and the present value of future liabilities. When interest rates fall, the present value of future liabilities increases as more capital is needed today to meet the same future obligations. Conversely, when interest rates rise, the present value of future liabilities decreases because the higher interest rates mean that less capital is needed today to meet future obligations. Thus, the movement of interest rates can massively affect the value of the pension scheme and crucially, whether it's funded or underfunded. Similarly, for inflation linked pensions, the value of the liabilities will increase with an increase in inflation and fall when the outlook for inflation decreases. The goal of the pension scheme is to invest in assets that will generate future returns. Pension trustees do not want to be exposed to fluctuations in interest rates and inflation. This is where an asset manager can advise the pension scheme and hedge the interest rate exposure. For each maturity bucket, the asset manager would like to hedge the interest rate risk. If the present value of the liability increases when interest rates fall, then they'd like an instrument, a financial instrument, that moves in the other direction. That's to say, 
increases in value when rates fall. Now that type of instrument is actually quite easy to find. Government bonds increase in value when rates fall and decrease in value when interest rates rise. Let's see why. Government bonds pay a series of interest payments called coupons based on their interest rate and return their final value at maturity. The coupons are shown as yellow bars on this diagram and the final value is shown in green. Given the current interest rates, we can calculate the present value of these future cash flows, which are shown in red. We can sum all these up to generate the fair price of the government bond. As rates increase, the fair value decreases. This stands to reason. If interest rates are higher, you need less money invested now to meet the obligation in the future. Conversely, if rates fall, the price of the bond will increase. This means that government bonds are a great hedge for the interest rate exposure in our pension scheme. If we can buy bonds of the right maturity and in the correct size, we can completely eliminate the interest rate risk in the pension portfolio and allow the pension plan to focus on the right investments, such as equities, to meet its liabilities. Likewise, we can also use the government bond market to manage our inflation risk. In the US, the government issues TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, and in the UK, Index Linked Gilts, or Linkers. The final payout of these instruments is linked to an inflation rate like the Consumer Price Index or Retail Price Index. So as inflation rises, the value of these instruments rises too. This hedges the inflation risk in the portfolio. So all seems good and we can use the bond market to hedge our risks. But there are two subtle problems. Firstly, the purchase of government bonds requires cash. We have to pay for the bond. This ties up capital that our pension plan would rather use to invest in products like equities to meet those liabilities. The second is scarcity. There are only a certain number of bonds in issue and there are some gaps in maturity as can be seen by this chart of UK government debt maturing by year. Now, this is where interest rate swaps come in. An interest rate swap is a financial derivative contract in which two parties agree to exchange a stream of future interest payments for another, based on a specified principal amount. Typically, one party pays a fixed interest rate and receives a variable rate tied to an index, such as Sonia in the UK. Sonia, or Sterling Overnight Index Average, is the rate most commonly used for sterling swaps. Conversely, the other party pays the variable rate and receives the fixed rate. These swaps are used by businesses and financial institutions to manage exposure to fluctuations in interest rates, allowing them to stabilize the costs or revenues associated with their debt or investments. The actual principal amount is not exchanged. Only the interest payment cash flows are swapped, making it a very cost effective tool for interest rate risk management. To find out more about interest rate swaps, there's a link in the description and a card appearing on your screen for Lucidate videos on the subject. Swaps are individually negotiated contracts and very liquid. You can easily find a swap counterparty to trade in any maturity, so there are no scarcity issues as there are with government bonds. Also, as we said, gilts require you purchase the gilt for cash. As a pension fund, you want the interest rate hedging capabilities of the gilt, but you'd rather use the cash to invest in higher yielding products like equities. There's also a liquid market in inflation swaps. This means all of the advantages of interest rate swaps, hedging risk, availability at any maturity and not having to tie up capital are also there for inflation too. Now, as we said at the outset, all this stuff with swaps and derivatives and hedging is quite complex. Please feel free to pause and rewind the video and make sure it makes sense. As well as, as I said, check out some of Lucidate's other videos on this topic. Links again in the description. But the purpose of this discussion, if you recall, was to set up the importance of fine tuning our LLMs. Out of the box LLMs, 
have seen some content on LDI, derivatives, pension funds, asset managers, etc., in their training corpora, and seem to have a grasp of the basics. But the material is quite dense and technical. We'd like to get our LLM beyond the basics and comfortable with detailed material. This is where fine tuning comes in. We can build our own specialized training corpus from publicly available information on the internet. Here's one such example, a Bank of Montreal piece on liability-driven investment. We can see what I hope by now are familiar concepts, such as the shape of liabilities, the present value of those liabilities based on interest rates, the impact of inflation, guilt and link evaluation, and crucially, how to use derivatives to match liabilities by hedging interest rates and inflation. This is just one of many such documents that we can use to build our fine tuning corpus. We can, of course, build this manually should we wish, but it's far more efficient to use tools such as Beautiful Soup or Selenium to build these corpora programmatically. See again the description for a link to a video on how to use tools like Beautiful Soup or click on the card on the screen. Once we've built our fine-tuning corpora from expert articles, we need to convert it into a format for fine-tuning. OpenAI in particular has some excellent documentation on the fine-tuning process and the format required. Now we have one final hurdle to overcome. We need a technology that is really good at analysing language and converting it from one format to another. Clearly, until very recently, this would have been quite a major computer science challenge, but now, thanks to LLMs, it's trivial. With a smattering of Python, some judicious use of Langchain, and a well-crafted prompt, such as the one you see on your screen, it is a simple matter to turn our vast training corpus into the structure that OpenAI requires for fine-tuning, using an LLM like GPT. The resulting JSON file for input for fine-tuning is shown on your screen. Once we've fine-tuned our model, which takes about an hour, we can put it to use. Here's a schematic of the key parts of the application that you're about to see. Here are two objects that do most of the heavy lifting. One is called Visualization Expert and the other PowerPoint Expert. They both inherit from a base class called AI Expert. The Visualization Expert has two of our fine-tuned LLMs and the PowerPoint Expert has just one. The first LLM in the Visualization Expert is responsible for reading in the raw input data from a database, a price feed, or in our case, a spreadsheet. It then uses prompts of the type you see on your screen to generate charts and commentary. These charts and commentary are then fed into a fresh LLM in this object to generate a summary. Now, if you only have a small amount of data to analyze, a second LLM may be a bit of overkill. But if you use a single LLM and have a large amount of data, then the context window of that LLM may be biased towards the data recently seen, and the older data will have less influence on the summary. Both the charts and commentary, as well as the summary, are then fed into the second object with its own fresh LLM. This LLM can be prompted with the type of prompt you see on your screen. Here, we're injecting the information generated by the first object into the prompt to generate each slide. So, bearing that in mind, here's the application. We have a spreadsheet that contains a bunch of relevant data, including worksheets for assets and liabilities, specific information on the assets themselves, as well as interest rate and inflation data. When we drag this into the application, we load the information into the Visualization Expert, as we've just seen. The first LM in the Visualization Expert is prompted to generate charts and commentary. These pieces of analysis are displayed on the screen as well as stored 
in the memory of the visualization object. Once this analysis is completed, the results of all the analysis are fed into the second LLM in the visualization expert for summarization. Then the charts and commentary along with this summary are sent to the second object to build the PowerPoint presentation. As you saw earlier, the commentary and summary data is injected into the prompt of the LLM in the PowerPoint expert to build each slide. Finally, the application renders the complete presentation, which can be customized in any way the user wishes. And there you have it. We've just taken a deep dive into how AI, specifically large language models, can be fine-tuned to serve as powerful tools in asset management, transforming complex data sets into insightful, client-ready presentations in a fraction of the time that it takes today. To quickly recap, we've explored the intricacies of pension schemes and financial derivatives, highlighting the critical role that AI can play in simplifying and streamlining the sales and client service process for asset managers. If you're part of an asset management firm, imagine the efficiency and precision you could add to your sales strategy with this technology. Lucidate's AI application is designed to enhance your capabilities, so I encourage you to reach out and learn more about integrating this cutting-edge solution into your workflow. As AI continues to evolve, the potential for even more sophisticated applications in the financial sector is immense. The future is bright, and we at Lucidate are excited to be at the forefront, innovating for a smarter, faster, a more accurate asset management process. Got questions or want to see more content like this? Drop us a comment below. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with the latest from Lucidate. Check out the links in the description for a deeper understanding of everything that we've covered, from pension schemes to the nitty gritty of fine tuning LLMs. We've also included links to tutorials and other videos on using tools like Beautiful Soup for building your own corpora programmatically. Thank you for joining me, Richard Walker, on this journey through the intersection of AI and asset management. Your time and attention are greatly appreciated. Until next time, keep exploring and let's continue to demystify the world of AI together. This is Richard Walker from Lucidate, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.